Hey, it's Lauren. So this video has been long awaited by many of you. And today we are going to talk all about getting your hair as healthy as possible. I think that there's a lot of different components to it. And so I really want to be thorough um, in explaining all of those. For those of you who are new here and don't know, I am a licensed cosmetologist of 10 years. Um, I am not currently in a salon, but I do maintain my license through renewals. And um, I love hair. I know a lot about hair. I know a lot about what not to do with hair because I've had my hair melted off my head before, not by my own doing. Um, we'll get into that in a little bit. But I do have a lot of really great tips for achieving your healthiest hair, soft hair, shiny hair, healthy hair. Um, so without further ado, let's dive right in. Uh, one of the biggest things that I saw when I was in the salon was people not properly washing their hair um, or waiting way too long in between washes. So the big thing that a lot of people do, they get in the shower, they kind of slap some shampoo on there and kind of like do like this and they're not really cleansing up underneath, okay? So when you shampoo your hair, get it fully saturated, fully wet, get shampoo, put it in there, Work it up underneath here, up under the nape of your neck. That is a spot that gets really oily on a lot of people, um, up in the crown. Get your fingers up under there. If you've ever had a really good hair washing at a salon, that stylist is not just gonna be lathering the top of your head. They're gonna really get in there and massage your scalp. I actually like to shampoo twice. I feel like that really thoroughly cleanses the hair. Um, I know a lot of people think that's kind of just like some made up thing on the back of a shampoo bottle, but it actually does make a huge difference. That first time that you are washing the hair, you are starting to kind of break down those oils and start to sweep them away. The second time, there is none left and your hair is so nice and clean. And when you do this, your style is going to last longer too. I speak from experience. Now the next thing, when you condition your hair, I think it is important to note, you don't wanna put that conditioner up on the top of your hair because that's going to make your hair get oily faster. You really want to focus on kind of these mid strands down toward the ends of your hair. That is where your hair is gonna get naturally the most dry. Your oils come from your scalp and they work their way down. And so this portion of your hair is usually going to be naturally more conditioned than the ends of your hair that are not getting all of that oil from the top of your hair. Um, so really focusing on the ends. And then the next key component to an excellent wash is really rinsing your hair well. And I think this is probably the biggest thing that people don't do is really taking the time to rinse their hair. I think a lot of times people kind of leave conditioner in their hair and it makes your hair get oily faster, feel dirty and attract dirt and oils. But if you are thoroughly getting all of that conditioner off, you're not going to have a film of that conditioner on your hair um, and your hair is gonna stay cleaner longer. I think washing is super, super important and understanding when to wash. The frequency at which you need to wash your hair is going to depend on some different factors like how quickly your scalp gets oily. What is your activity level? Um, are you outside a lot? It really just kind of depends on you and your hair. I have been someone who has been on a daily wash cycle and I've gone to about a week. I can't really, I don't wanna go more than a week without washing my hair. I really love having clean hair. Right now, my frequency of washing is usually every three to four days, just kind of depending. Um, usually on that like third, fourth day, I'm like, I really wanna wash my hair by now, but I do use dry shampoo. Um, I do have a very active lifestyle. I have a toddler, I exercise a lot, I'm outdoors. I do a lot of different things. So after about three days, I'm like, yeah, I really wanna wash my hair. When I wash my hair, I like to do a pre-shampoo oiling um, right now, I've been using this Lenora Grail oil. It smells fantastic. It's like kind of got this like gardenia, slight lemongrass. It smells like you've been at the beach. It's so lovely. Um, but the benefits of oiling your hair before you wash it is that it's going to nourish that hair. It's going to give it some slip. And that way, when you get in there and you really start shampooing, it's not gonna snag on itself as much because it's got that lubrication from the oil. And also, I just, I love this stuff anyway. Usually when I use it, I try to put it in, really massage my scalp, and then I'll like usually take a bath that night. So it's like nice and warm and like just really 
soaks in and it feels very luxurious and I just love using that stuff. Um, and then I do my wash cycle. Now, the next thing, the, these things are gonna be harder for some people. <laughs> so a lot of people in our modern society color their hair, like myself, um, use a lot of heat, I used to, um, are very rough with their hair when they brush it and wear really tight styles. There's a lot of different things that we do that are not great for our hair. <laughs> so let's talk about coloring first. Um, color inherently is not necessarily bad, but I think we color too frequently. And if you are someone who is bleaching your hair, you are really going to break down your hair a little bit faster. So I have tried to stretch out the amount of time in between my colors. Normally, because I do an all over color, normally I go about four weeks between colors. So like once a month. And, you know, I've kind of started stretching that to five. I think if you can extend that amount of time a little bit between colors, it's better for your hair. You're not going to have as much that peroxide going on to your hair quite so frequently. Now, if you are a bleach blonde and you do an all over global bleach, well, yeah, you do want to stick to a very regimented schedule. Otherwise your stylist is going to yell at me because it's going to end up with banding and then you're going to have breakage and it's just going to be a lot harder to maintain. <laughs> I also know because I have had platinum blonde hair before, you don't want to wait super long, but it is important that you are going to someone who understands not to overlap that color because the more you overlap color you are putting peroxide over peroxide whether that is dye or bleach or whatever it is you're overlapping different sections of your hair and so the less you can do that the better the other thing i will recommend whether you are doing your hair at home or you are going into a salon you want to make sure you are using some type of bond builder I personally really love K18. This has saved my hair from melting off my head when I went from really dark to really light. Um, and I bleached multiple times. But this is basically hair insurance. So having a stylist that knows how to incorporate a bond builder into the routine, I think is crucial for maintaining the health of your hair. It's going to sort of counteract the effects of peroxide breaking down that cuticle and blowing it open. It's, it's gonna keep your hair feeling better by preventing those bonds from just completely breaking. Because what happens if you have too much color on your hair, your hair will snap off of your head. I've actually had a stylist do this to me once. I was in college and I wanted to go from very dark to very light and we were gonna do it very gradually and do several rounds of highlights. I, you know, I understood that that was the best way to do it. Well, she was a newer stylist. She took two and a half hours to put all of the foils into my hair. And then she sat me under a dryer, which most salons don't even use dryers anymore, but she sat me under a dryer. Heat accelerates that process and really blows that cuticle open even more when you put color on. So we get to the shampoo wall and I asked her, I was like, how's it look? 18 year old me, how's it look? And she's like, um, it's, yeah, we're gonna need to tone it. And that was like, Red flag, <laughs> something is very wrong. She rinsed it out, toned it. We get back to her chair. My hair is pumpkin orange. Like there are dark streaks from where that she didn't put the hair in the foils and then it was pumpkin orange where it had gone into the foils. And then she started blow drying. My hair was not drying because it was so porous and spongy and elastic and it started snapping off. <laughs> like this far from my scalp. So I had like strings of hair and like broken bleach damage. Now, mind you, this is how I started college. <laughs> I started college my first semester, um, basically going into every class with oil on my hair under a ball cap and like just so mortified. It was awful. So finding a colorist that knows what they're doing, or if you do your own color, really avoid overlapping. Make sure you have some type of bond builder as insurance to help you from your hair melting off. By the way, this K18, this is the mask. This is the one that is available to everyone. So you can use this at home. You don't have to be a professional. There is the professional mist um, for those of you pros, but this I actually have in my shop list site. So if you want to shop this via Sephora, you can get some of this 
and a little goes a long way. I use like a pump and a half on my hair. That's all I need. And now that my hair is healthier, I only use it like once a month maybe twice a month, but really not that often. And the effects have lasted for me because I am not doing as many damaging things to my hair as I normally do. So I think it's very important to know how to wash your hair properly, really get it rinsed out, make sure you are not over coloring your hair, really try to stretch out those appointments if you can, use some sort of bond builder on your hair. Um, and now let's move into another portion of this because I think this is one of the biggest components to having very healthy hair, is understanding how to care for and style it. So I really wanna take this kind of back to basics a little bit. Um, a lot of people, when they brush and detangle their hair, will start up at the top and just rip that brush through. Now, if you have shorter hair, like a bob, like obviously you can do that and it's not going to be so detrimental. But if you do have longer hair, like myself, <laughs> you want to start at the bottom of your hair and start detangling and gradually move that brush a little higher. And that way, if you have any snags, you can get them out without ripping through and then making the snag worse, okay? This is an Eve's Derif brush. I absolutely love this. Um, it's vented, so if you do blow dry your hair or something like that, the air will go through um, very easily. But it's a great detangling brush. It's like a nicer version of a wet brush, in my opinion. I've had this for a couple years now, and I absolutely love it. This is also in my shop if you want to look at stuff there. But I love this brush. It's a very gentle brush. Great for detangling. I've used this on my daughter who has really curly hair. So like before we wash her hair, I'll use this on her too. So for, that's the first element of care is being gentle with your hair, not ripping a brush through it because that's going to cause breakage. The next thing I wanna talk about, I have not used heat on my hair probably close to two months. And I recognize like this is a very kind of like retro vibe style and it's not for everyone. I completely understand that. But my point with this is if you can find ways to avoid using heat on your hair, you are going to maintain the moisture balance in your hair better. You are not going to singe it with heat um, and it's just going to be healthier and it's actually gonna to start to grow more. I think it's very interesting because our modern society, we created these hot tools to create convenience in our lives. And I actually think it's made it harder for a lot of people. And I think it's harder on your hair. <laughs> this is coming from someone who has worked in the salon and used a lot of hot tools on people and things like that. Using hot tools, you can get very specific results. You can get exactly what you want. Um, and it takes less time in the sense that you're not having to like sleep in something. Um, but I mean, when you're really sitting there and doing your hair, for some people, it takes like an hour between like blow drying and using either a flat iron or a curling iron or whatever, it's not necessarily more convenient. Cause I will tell you right now, I roll my hair at night. It takes me maybe five minutes and I wake up and I brush it out and that's it. What I have started doing with my hair, <laughs> sorry, I have to laugh because it's just like, we make things harder for ourselves as humans and not always with better results. <laughs> Not always with healthier results. We do things in the name of convenience and it's not necessarily more convenient. So heatless styles, I think, are really crucial if you are trying to preserve the health of your hair to help it get longer. Now, I recognize some of you have extremely curly hair and you don't want to wear it curly. Well, that is a bit of a challenge because trying to smooth out really curly hair without heat you can kind of stretch your curls out, but it's not really going to be smooth. I think if you have really curly, curly, curly hair, embrace your texture. I think curls are so beautiful. Learn how to do like pieces of the curly girl method. I don't necessarily think you need to do the entire curly girl method. I think it's a bit extreme and not necessary, but adopting certain techniques with curly girl method styling if you have curls and really embracing your texture is going to be so much healthier for your hair 
than trying to iron it out all the time. I would say save that for special occasions. You don't need to do it all the time. If you have really straight hair or slightly wavy hair, kind of like myself, I've kind of got like a 1B, like a little bit of texture. I can really play it up and get like a 1C if I really want to. If you have smoother hair, the things that I'm gonna recommend are gonna be a little bit easier for you um, to get some shape and style without killing your hair with heat. <laughs> So I personally, I personally don't love a lot of the like rollers and things available on the market. So I made my own. <laughs> if you're crafty, this is really an easy project. So I have, pull them all out here because I've got a lot of them. I have eight rollers that I made myself. Got hair on them. Don't mind that. Um, and the reason that I made mine is because a lot of the rollers that you can buy in the store have like that slightly harder foam in them. And when you try to sleep on that, it's not super comfortable. That like wakes me up and I just like, I, I can't do it. It annoys me. So I started thinking a little bit and I was like, how can I create a roller that's going to give me a good shape that is also going to be comfortable to sleep on? So what I came up with... <laughs> is I just got some basic cotton fabric. I wanted something kind of fun and funky. So I went with like a bright, punchy peony floral. Um, and then I took uh, quilting batting and I rolled it up into little tubes. And then um, initially I just rolled that up and sewed it and then I put a snap on like so, boop. And so your hair goes around this part and this sits up here like this. I'll show you guys in a minute. And then I realized I needed a little more bulk in the middle where my hair goes around that roller so I opened them up and added a thicker layer around that inner portion so it's a little bit less batting on the outside where it folds over and then it's thicker here and the nice thing about this is because there's a little bit of a plushness to it it helps to hold your hair on the roller easier so I made eight of those total and it creates like this very like Kind of barrel curled style and personally I really love that. I think it's really elegant and timeless. You may think it's a little bit dated and kind of retro looking, but you know to each their own. I really don't care. I like that my hair has gotten so like I've, I've started getting like almost like a glassy shine to my hair because it's so healthy and maintaining that moisture in my hair. If you don't like this type of style and your hair happens to be longer um, I also made this one for myself because I just wanted to try it out. The um, very like popular heatless curls thing where you take it like this and you start wrapping this stuff around, pull some from the back and keep wrapping that around. Use scrunchies and then I made mine with a snap so that it would make like a halo basically so it wouldn't move around. Um, also a great method. I've just found my hair has enough layers right now that those kind of start poking out and it doesn't give me quite the volume that I want. The one thing I've done that I actually liked better was I took one of these and I put it up on the crown so I would get more lift back here. And then I did the rest of my hair on this. So there are other heatless methods if you don't like a more retro look. <laughs> if you are kind of okay with this type of style and you have hair with shorter layers or that is a bit shorter, I do recommend using some sort of smaller roller rather than like the big heatless curls thing over your head. And if you are not confident making that yourself or you don't have a sewing machine, these you can actually find on Amazon. Um, I found some and recommended them to a family member and she used them. I thought her hair turned out really cute. I think it just takes some practice getting used to rolling your hair with these. So what I do when I roll my hair with these, I shower do my thorough cleanse. When I get out of the shower, I usually prep my hair with a couple sprays of my Evolve Smart Volume. This is really great, kind of helps to tangle, condition, and protect my hair a little bit. And then I also, I'm obsessed with Virtue. I love Virtue. Um, this is a six in one styler, so it adds a little bit of shape and shine and hold. And it's got the Alpha Keratin 60KU, so it's also going to help heal the damage on the ends of my hair, because my Hair still has more damage down here than what's growing in. 
So this is a fantastic product. And then I will use a little bit of a mousse predominantly in my roots. If I want a little bit softer of a hold, I will use my Evolve Insta Volume Volumizing Mousse. If I want a little more of like a big, big volume kind of look, I'll use this Air Professional Dry Texture Mousse. Um, this stuff smells incredible. So, so good. But also, I think both of these are also really great for helping to absorb oil and prolong your style a little bit more. So I apply my base products, you know, um, a leave-in conditioner, my styling cream um, to help protect my hair and give it a little bit of moisture and shine, and then some sort of mousse. And then I'll brush that through and let my hair dry like 95%. And that takes usually about two hours for me. So like if I shower at night, I'll like wash my hair, put my products in, go watch some Netflix. And then by the time I'm ready to go to bed, it takes me like five minutes to roll my hair and I'm ready, set to go to bed. So let me show you how, how we do the roll. The way that I roll my hair is super simple. It's only eight rollers. So what I do is I take a little section for my front, like bangs, layers, I guess. And let me show you kind of how much. It doesn't have to be perfect. I do try to keep it a little balanced. Okay, got our front section. You'll notice I have a ton of baby hairs. It almost looks like postpartum hair loss. I had surgery in October, so it's been about six months and I've got all this fun regrowth. It's kind of a fun fact if you ever have any type of surgery or you start new medications, any type of hormonal changes, those kinds of things can make your hair fall out. It's not just having a baby and those hormones. <laughs> All right, so when I roll my hair, I kind of pull it forward. Look at that shine on my hair. It's gotten so healthy. Kind of pull it forward a little bit and kind of see the over direction. Now here's the key part about rolling your hair. You wanna make sure those little ends stay smooth under the hair that you're rolling them under. And I like to do this by taking my thumb and holding my thumb and my fingers. You'll see how I'm tucking those in, pulling my fingers over them as I roll down. And now they're tucked in so you don't have to worry about it, but very important to do that so you don't have crinkled ends and then like really smooth, beautiful curls. <laughs> so then I roll that down. You can see it's nice and flush. Now here's the part that's important. You wanna twist those a little bit more. And it creates a little bit of like a, a pressure on there so it will stay in place. And yes, I know this looks crazy and I don't care because it saved me so much time and the health of my hair. Legit don't care, okay? So like I have my rat tail comb. I really like having a rat tail comb because if you really wanna pull more or less out of a section, that's very easy to do once you get the hang of it. And I do another one on top, like so. Tuck those ends, hold your thumb over them as you roll all the way down. Give it another twist or two, however much you need. I like having snaps on mine, it makes it much easier. This one you can tell is a little too floppy, so I'm gonna twist that again and that will hold it in place better. I've even used a bobby pin before and like pinned these two together to like hold that back more. Third section right here. You kind of give yourself like a little mohawk while you do this. <laughs> Scooting back so you can hopefully see more. Get those ends nice and untangled so you don't have any like rat's nests in your hair while you do this. Tuck those ends, hold them. Roll it down, roll it up tight. It's important that you get it snug because you don't want any of this coming undone on your pillow. Now, I kind of come right behind my ear, like right here. And you've got this whole section right here, okay? Now here's where I do things a little different. And this is the only two sections that I roll a bit differently. Everything else, I'm just rolling under. These I roll up because it gives you more of like a slightly modern away from the face kind of curl. Because if you don't, it looks more like 1940s. Okay, so take this, got your roller. 
roll from underneath. Same concept though, you wanna make sure you tuck those ends, hold your thumb over it, roll it up, and we're not gonna do it here because that'll roll back down. What you do, twist it and snap it underneath. And this has worked out much better than going under on this one. So I'll do the same thing here, come from behind the ear, like so. Make sure you're not to rip through those ends. Try to be gentle with your hair. Another roller. Under. Obviously, this is a bit easier and faster when I'm not explaining how to do everything, but even still, this does not take a long time to do. Find that snap, like so. Now, I've got three rollers left, okay? From the back here, what I like to do, whoop, we got one straggler, we got a few pieces that are coming out. Sometimes if that happens, it's because you didn't tuck your ends enough. And so what you do, just undo it, and kind of pull it towards the bottom here so the ends are there. Make sure those ends are well rolled into your hair. This is much harder to do with my camera screen than a mirror. <laughs> All right. Now for this back portion, we've got those three rollers. I like to draw a line across the back of my head. So you're separating that in two, like so. Then you're going to I'm gonna just turn around so hopefully you can see it this way. You're going to split it down the middle Like so, so you've got your three sections, okay? So you've got your three sections. You've got these two, and then you've got one kind of bigger one at the nape of your neck. And what you're gonna do, these you'll just roll under like all the rest. It's just those side two that I do that are a little different and special. Same thing with all of these three sections. Make sure your ends are smooth. Roll and tuck like so. Give it an extra twist or two. You'll be able to start figuring out how much tension you need, especially after you've slept on them a few times. Okay, got our section here. Use my little rat tail. And then we've got our last section, which is at the nape of your neck. And even though it seems like that's a really wide section, you have to keep in mind your hairline typically tapers. So it's not as much hair on there as you might think. You'll notice I'm not even looking at my camera because I just kind of know by feel like how it's supposed to feel at this point. I've done it enough. Clip. All right. This is my nightly roller set. This is how I go to bed and I look real cute. All right. <laughs> Thank God my husband loves me just the way I am. He accepts me and all my crazy antics. Okay. Um, so let me show you kind of what this looks like all the way around. All my hair is up off of me. The great thing about using rollers like this is it's kind of like a protective style. All your ends are rolled up and tucked into here. So now this is the step where I go to bed, get, you know, solid eight hours of sleep, hopefully. <laughs> and um, so when I wake up, my hair is ready to be taken down. And now this is the, I would say, critical part of this, because I think a lot of people are afraid of rollers because everybody's had like that one sponge roller incident where you were scarred for life because you're like, oh my God, now I look like Shirley Temple and what have I done? I have to go to school. Yeah, because same girl. I did the same thing when I was younger. It was awful. This is where roller sets, I think, scare people off because they don't know what to do with them once they take their hair down, okay? And you're end you'll end up with these little like corkscrews and you're like, 
what do I do with that? Take it all down. Okay. And so, yeah, like I said, I think this is the part that a lot of people get to and they're like, what do I do with that? For this step, you could use a brush like the Yves Drift, or you could use my personal favorite, the baby, Mason Peterson. Had this brush for years, absolutely love it. So what you do, what's so great about this, this particular one is the Nylon and Boar Bristle Blend. Um, they're very gentle on your hair. They help to distribute oils from your scalp. You can get a good scalp massage because of those longer nylon bristles. I love this brush. I think it's fantastic. I think everyone should have one if you can ever make the splurge because it's probably the last brush you'll ever need to buy in your life. <laughs> okay, so start from the bottom, just like we talked about earlier, working through that hair. You'll notice those curls are starting to kind of break up and reshape a bit. Just be gentle with it. You don't need to do anything too rough with it. Okay. Same thing over here. Now, obviously my hair was a little bit brushed out because I had already kind of worked it into a style earlier. It's not as tight as when I first take it down. But the first thing you'll notice is I got a whole lot of volume. <laughs> All right, that's like one of my favorite things about rolling my hair like this is like my fine hair actually has volume for like the first time ever. <laughs> All right, now the great thing about the Mason Pearson is you can really kind of coax your curls into shapes and kind of work them all together. And this is the part where you get to have a little bit of creative liberty here. I try to figure out kind of what they want to do and encourage that and just roll with it, you know? Like, I just think it can be really classic and elegant looking. I try to pull it kind of down some because my hair wants to pop up when I do it that way. You can kind of twist them a little bit like so. Look how shiny that is though. It's, my hair has gotten so much healthier since I stopped using so much heat on it. Same thing over here. Kind of figure out what those curls want to do. Use your fingers to kind of shape them. And normally I would look at the back and kind of see what's going on, but I kind of have a good idea of how to do this without a mirror. So I'm just gonna kind of coax them into place. And that's kind of it. It's super, super easy. It does not take me a long time to fix my hair and make it look like I've done a lot more than I actually have at this point. So now the next thing that you can do, I personally like to finish with a little bit of hairspray because it really helps my little baby hairs. This is the John Masters Organics. Um, this is their hairspray with acacia gum and aloe. And it does have alcohol in it, but it does have aloe leaf juice as the first ingredient. So it's a little more moisturizing than your average hairspray. Just like that, a little mist of that to help control my flyaways and all my new growth that is coming in. I really like this hairspray a lot. A lot, a lot. I don't find it to be as drying as some others. That's it for the styling. Super easy. It'll soften throughout the day, but I find that my hair holds on to these curls pretty well. And then, this is the, the best part. At night, I will usually just lightly mist my hair with a little bit of water, and then I roll it back up. And that's kind of it. Um, I do like to use different things to help kind of hydrate the ends of my hair before I roll too. So like I'll mist it with a little bit of water just to kind of reactivate that mousse and stuff. And then I will use um, usually one of three different things. So this is a new one that I just started using that I'm actually really into. This is Dream Routine from Amika and it's an overnight treatment and it's got sea buckthorn oil in it and hyaluronic acid and things to really help hydrate and moisturize your hair while you sleep. You don't have to wash it out in the morning. My hair is so soft after I use this, like super soft, touchable, shiny. One pump is all you need for the ends of your hair. I actually use this on my daughter's hair. She's got really curly hair. Amazing on curly hair too, and it smells fantastic. This is awesome if you can get it. The other one that I use is the InnerSense Organic Harmonic Treatment Oil. 
And this has like rosemary. Let me read it off. Let me find it. Safflower seed oil, evening primrose, macadamia oil, hazel seed oil, bitter orange oil, rosemary, orange oil. There's a, there's a whole host of stuff in here. And this stuff has actually been awesome on my hair. Also, this doesn't have any silicone, so it really just kind of absorbs into the hair to nourish it overnight. Just a little bit of this through the ends of my hair. I'll brush it through and then I'll roll it. Fantastic. Kind of the idea with those two products is like hair slugging, which is kind of like the new trendy thing. Obviously these products are not occlusive the way Vaseline or Aquaphor is for your face, but the premise is something kind of oily and nourishing for your hair and then wearing it in a protective style to really maintain the goodness of those ingredients. And then the last thing that I've kind of started incorporating into my routine is this Carol's Daughter Black Vanilla Spray. It smells really, really good. Um, but this is like a hydrating leave-in conditioner. Great for shine in your hair. It's got some glycerin in it. And I use this like after I've unrolled my hair. Sometimes like I'll use my um, Inner Sense oil or I'll use a little bit of this or sometimes both if my hair is feeling a little more dry that day. Um, and kind of like work that in as I brush through it. So it really distributes through my hair. And this just really helps to make my hair super shiny and more soft and hydrated. And I just, I've noticed a big, big change in my hair. Like, honestly, it's night and day. I mean, a lot of you who have followed me for a while know that like I have done a lot of stuff to my hair. You've probably seen my other videos where I talk about different blow dryers or hot tools or whatever. I haven't used any of that since I've been doing this and rolling my hair and like treating it nice. <laughs> and my hair is like feeling so much healthier. And obviously like with it being curled, like you can't tell how much it's grown, but I'll kind of like, you can tell, like it's getting longer. <laughs> Finally, it took forever. There's more, but wait, there's more. The thing that I'll say is like, I do work out like five to six days a week and I work out from home. <laughs> so this, may not work for you if you like work out at a gym or go take classes or something. But what I do with my hair while I work out to maintain my curl so it doesn't all drop out, I use about four of my rollers and then a Velcro roller. <sighs> Let me show you. So it's not as many rollers as when I sleep at night to get that style and shape. My front section, I will use a Velcro roller like so. Make sure you pull it through the ends, get those ends smooth so they're not crinkly. Roll it down like so. And then I'll do one big section on the top. Pull that up. Put it on a roll. Roll it down. I'm not doing this too perfect because we're not gonna keep this in for very long. Just doing it for demo purposes in case you are someone who also works out at home. Okay, got your side ones. Roll those, roll them up like so. This one. And then you've got like a whole bunch back here. So this is how I work out. <laughs> so ridiculous. Um, obviously I work out from home, so like I don't care if my hair looks crazy while I work out. But what this does is it helps to maintain the shape of my curls so they don't all completely drop out when I get all hot and sweaty. And in fact, because of that heat, it almost kind of like sets them and keeps them from falling out. So I'll do my workout and then I'll kind of like make my smoothie and like cool off a bit and then Here's the important part. Before you go to take a shower, wear a shower cap. I leave my rollers in when I do this, like so. Pull this baby. Boop, 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 boop. Just like that, and I'll shower. That way my hair doesn't get wet and the steam is not going to make it melt while I'm wearing this. Um, and then when I'm all done, Gently take it all off. Get out of your steamy bathroom because if you take this down in a steamy bathroom, your curls are going to fall. 
So same thing as before though, you just take it all down, get it all brushed out. And then if my hair, you know, if it's been like a day or two since I've washed, I'll use my Virtue Labs dry shampoo, which I absolutely love. It is my favorite dry shampoo. And it is my favorite because it does not leave a white powdery film in your hair. Um, and in fact, I will show you guys because I could use some. I got a, a rebounder, like a mini trampoline, because that was part of my physical therapy, like after my surgery. Um, recently, they started adding in like a mini trampoline and it's really fun. Um, but yeah, I could use a little dry shampoo. So hang on. If you haven't seen this dry shampoo before, prepare to have your mind blown. I have tried a lot of dry shampoos. Like, let's be honest, with my job and working in the salon, having access to pro discounts and things like that, I have tried a lot of dry shampoos. And even some of the more like popular ones that people really like, they're fine, but I didn't love them. <laughs> I'd rather just wash my hair. So this stuff, you can see nothing. You can see nothing because it doesn't leave a film in your hair. It is freaking amazing. That's not even me like, you know, I haven't even like moved it around and you can tell there's like nothing there. You can see it going in, but it doesn't leave a chalky cast. It smells really good. Makes your hair feel completely clean. I honestly, I have tried other dry shampoos. I buy this in bulk. I'm out of my big cans right now. I'm using my travel cans because I do have those too. <laughs> I cannot be without this stuff. Um, they do sell out quite frequently. So you have been warned. Um, and I'm just going to say it right now. Prepare to fall in love. I, I'm just going to tell you right now, go ahead and buy two because you're going to love it. And, um, it's amazing. It like you can barely feel what maybe feels a little powder in your hands, but it's not like that chalky residue that so many leave like in your hair, on your fingers, on your brushes, like all over everything. This stuff though is amazing in between washes and in between rolls and styles. It has helped me extend my styles to every three to four days even on the days that I'm riding 20, 25 miles on my bike and doing intense aerobics, rebounding on my little mini trampoline. Um, this stuff is incredible and it makes your hair look good. It gives you a little bit of extra volume and texture. Uh, highly, highly recommend. I rave about this stuff all the time, but it's for a good reason. So I think that covers everything. This has been incredibly thorough. I've been really just kind of waiting composing my thoughts and I wanted to make sure that this was very comprehensive because I want you to have success with your hair if you are trying to get it healthier, if you are trying to grow it out because I've had my hair burned off my head. I've been mean to my hair before to where it would just break off at the ends instead of getting any longer. Um, and I wanted to bring you on this journey with me because I'm sure some of you have been wondering like, why does her hair look like she's from the 1950s? <laughs> like, spoiler alert, I don't care. I'm totally like fine with this. I feel ultra glamorous and it takes me literally no time to do it. I also hope that seeing the brushing of this helps a lot. And also, you know, seeing what kind of rollers I use. I'll link the Amazon ones of these also. Um, I don't, I haven't used those because like I said, I made my own. If you're crafty, you can make your own. But yeah, I hope this was helpful. And if you liked it, um, please give it a little thumbs up. And that way it'll reach other people and more people will find my channel. And it makes it easier for me to continue doing this. Also, most of this stuff is linked in my shop list. So if you want an easy way to support me that doesn't cost you any extra, but you're wanting to buy some of this stuff, if you shop my affiliate shop list link, that does help me out as a creator and I can continue making this kind of content for you. So thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to do that too. And I will give you all of my favorite tips and tricks and share my favorite products with you. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.